Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about the best settings for taking birds on your Fuji X-T system. I'll see you after this. Now, as many of you know, I've been taking uh, some birds recently. I've been out with my 100 to 400 mil lens. I've been trying uh, that out. I've been trying another couple of things, out, another couple of zoom lenses out. Uh, but I did want to go over some settings that I think are absolutely vital if you are going to do any form of wildlife photography. These are the sorts of settings that are going to get you better pictures, sharper pictures, just better pictures. Um, and so I wanted to go over the settings that I've been using that actually I've got some really, really good results with. Really sharp, you know, noticing the, the water on a duck's back. It's like water off a duck's back. So the first thing is making sure that you're using the right zone settings. Um, with tracking shots, with, with auto tracking, you've got several different options. Obviously, you can't track faces and things because the camera doesn't do that. Uh, but you can uh, do either a choice of either wide tracking or zone tracking. And I got this completely wrong when I first started trying to do this. I was trying to use zone tracking, but I was trying to use it with the smallest um, possible uh, zone, and that was the wrong thing to do. So I moved on to doing wide tracking, and that was good. That worked really well, but for birds in flight and for birds as they were just about to take off, it just stopped working for me. It, it, it's too it's too erratic. It, it jumps onto the background as much as it jumps onto your subject, and that is a bit of a problem. So instead, um, somebody suggested using zone at its largest setting, and its largest setting is seven by seven. So that means that the entire center square of your camera is going to be used in order to try and focus on a moving object. I tried this out. It works so much better than the other setting that I had. So uh, that's the, the uh, uh, probably the best tip that I have. Um, for absolutely everything right now. That's the best tip that I had right now. Uh, that was, it was, it does work really, really well. The second one is your um, optical image stabilization. Optical image stabilization, obviously very, very important. You want to make sure that it's, it's right. Um, most people will put this on continuous because then when they're looking through the viewfinder, everything's nice and smooth. But actually, that's the wrong thing to do, I think, uh, because there is a different setting on there, which you've got three different settings. You've got off, which you do on the little switch on the side of your XF lens, uh, or if you've got to do through the whatever button you've set up for it. You've got off, you've got continuous, which is what we just talked about, so it's always on, and you've got uh, shooting only. Now, if you put it in shooting only mode, it's only going to try and capture an image, uh, or t rather turn the, the um, uh, stabilization on to capture an image when you press the, the button down. And that means that you can follow a, the, the bird around and you can be as erratic as you need to be when you're following the bird around. But when you press that shutter button down, it's going to try and, and, and stabilize that image and take the picture all in one go. And from what I found, that gives you a slightly better hit rate. And when you're doing something like birds in flight, getting anything, get, get any way that you can get your hit rate up is the best way to, to do it. And with that in mind, I wanted to, to bring this uh, as well. Change your shutter. Uh, change your shutter to ES mode, so that's electronic uh, mode. Don't put the number of frames a second you've got. Now, in the X-T3, you can do up to 11 frames a second with a mechanical shutter. If you're then going on to do an electronic shutter, don't change that. Leave it at 11 frames a second because that's not the important thing. The important thing is what happens to your live view when you have that shutter um, on electronic. When you have it on mechanical, you see you're not actually seeing the world as it is. What you're seeing is the world a fraction of a second behind. And this is why you should put it in boost mode as well, but I'll we'll go over that in a second. The problem with that is if you su suddenly start to see a bird turn in the viewfinder, in the real world it's already turned and because they're moving so fast it's gone and you lose tracking and it's very difficult to follow. If you do it with electronic shutter turned on, however, 
uh, you can do that. You can follow the bird. You can take your pictures. And when the shutter button goes, you don't get any any uh, um, blackness in the screen. You're seeing exactly what the camera is seeing through that viewfinder at the time. And so when the bird moves, you're ready to move with it. And that is an absolute godsend. I did my first couple of shoots without the electronic shutter on, and it was okay. But as soon as I turned that thing on, my hit rate went up. And um, it's brilliant. I, I, I'm going to use that from now on when I'm doing my uh, wildlife stuff. Now, some people do mention there's a thing you can get called rolling shutter. And what rolling shutter does is ma makes the verticals that you have in your image not vertical anymore. They, they kind of they slant off to one side. Um, and this is an issue because the sensor that you've got, or rather, the, yeah, well, the sensor that you've got reads your images like, like this, sort of line by line. And the rolling shutter happens when you have so many photos uh, all in one go uh, that the sensor can't read it in time. And that's why I'm saying don't change uh, your shutter speed from whatever it is, 11 frames a second on the X-T3, I think it's 15 frames a second on the X-T4, um, but instead um, put, just put it onto an electronic shutter and then let the camera do uh, the rest of the work. It really does make a hell of a difference. Um, also, autofocus mode should really be on custom. Now, um, uh, I've tried to do my own custom settings for this, and I'm not entirely happy with them yet. It needs a little bit more playing around with. But if you, uh, the, the, the autofocus mode is the one where you, you go into it and you've got a, a, a numbers down the one side and you've got pictures on the left and it tells you what sort of tracking you want to do. I have set mine on the picture with the skier. Okay. <laughs> and honestly, that has given me a better hit rate. Uh, the picture with the skier really seems to work quite well. Uh, so there you go. That's a, a, a good tip. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of putting it on the one with the animal on because you're trying to photograph an animal. But that's not the, the case. When you're trying to do a bird in flight, you're trying to do something that's moving really erratically. And actually, uh, the one with the skier on, which is four objects that appear and disappear into frame, actually gets your focus an awful lot better. So give that a go. I, I promise you, you won't, you won't uh, be disappointed with that. Um, there's another couple of things as well. When you turn automatic shutter on, you have the ability to turn on, um, is it pre-shot or pre-focus? Uh, that's a good idea as well, because what happens then is the camera's always sort of taking a few shots. And then when you actually put it up to your eye, when you, when you half press the thing, the camera's always sort of rolling with, with, uh, with shots. So when you finally decide to press the button, the chances of it locking onto your subject and the chances of it uh, actually getting those first few images are actually much higher. So that, I've tried that a couple of times. It does seem to work better. With using these settings, I've got my hit rate up from 30 to 40% to 60 to 70%. And if you've done any sort of wildlife photography in the past, you'll know that that's, that's a pretty big thing. The other one thing I would say to do, uh, there's a shutter priority that you've got as well. So you can have that either in release or focus. If you have it in release, every time you press the shutter down, it's going to try and take a picture. But if you put it into focus, every time you press the shutter down, it will take a picture if it thinks the object is in focus. And for a large part, that means that you're putting most of your camera on automatic, which for many people is going to be very scary, especially if they've had problems with that in the past. But what I'm seeing through what I'm doing is it means that you do get less photos on. And that has two important things. Firstly, it means that you can take more photos that are in focus. So if you're doing 11 frames a second, you might only get five or six frames a second but the chances of those being in focus are much greater than if you did 11 frames a second and maybe six or seven of those are out of focus to begin with. Um, that's it. Those are my birding settings. Those are the settings that I've been using for the last few times I've gone out with my lens. Uh, and I, I've been trying to get birds in the garden as well just to uh, 
uh, just to have a go with, with, with smaller animals and things like that. So far, that seems to be working. And I'd love to know what you use, if you're using, uh, uh, you know, what lens you're, you're using, what settings you're using for that. These ones that are working for me right now, am I doing anything wrong? Should there be something that I'm changing? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've liked this video and if you find it helpful, please do leave a like. If you don't like it for whatever reason, then also, you know, that's where the comments should go. Uh, and we can have a good, good old discussion about that in the comments. Next time, I'm doing something completely different, but I don't know what yet. Uh, but I will see you in the next video. If uh, you're new here, of course, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell icon at the end, and uh, the all notifications tab that pops up. And I'll see you uh, in the next video. And of course, until then, don't forget, keep taking those photos.